Hello, welcome to this course on statistical mechanics. I am going to try and explain to you uh, what I uh, intend to teach in this course. So, this course is mainly meant for uh, students and teachers of uh, physics who wish to learn statistical mechanics uh, at a rigorous uh, and detailed uh, level. So, uh, this course is going to be fairly rigorous and uh, I hope you will enjoy it. So, these, these are the topics that I am going to cover in this course. So, I am um, going to start with the history of thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. Then I am going to discuss the 0th law, 1st law and 2nd law of thermodynamics and the equivalence of the Clausius and Kelvin's form of the 2nd law. So, I am just uh, you know just telling you the sequence in which the topics are going to be covered. So, uh, I can fill in some details as we go along. So, that is how it is going to be. So, the third topic that I am going to cover is the idea of microstates and macrostates and the concept of entropy of the system. So, then I am going to explain how to calculate the entropy of uh, various systems uh, using combinatorics that is permutations and combinations and uh, because of that I am forced to restrict myself to systems with finite number of degrees of freedom. So, the other thing I am going to do next is uh, calculate uh, the entropy of ideal Bose and Fermi gases which lend themselves to uh, easy descriptions in terms of combinatorics because quantum systems are by nature discrete and discreteness is ideal for using the tools of combinatorics. So, the next topic I am going to discuss uh, is uh, the notion of intensive and extensive quantities and um, the uh, role of saddle point approximation in uh, ensuring that uh, the entropy of the system comes out as extensive. So, the other topic I am going to discuss next is uh, the equation I am going to derive the equations of state of uh, classic I mean of ideal Fermi and Bose gases. Uh, so, ideal gas means uh, you know the constituent particles do not interact with each other they only interact with the walls of the container. And then I am going to uh, explain uh, how uh, you can do various things with it useful calculations can be done when you combine uh, these equations of state with the fundamental relation of thermodynamics, which basically tells you how entropy is related to other extensive quantities. Okay, so, the next topic I am going to discuss or basically I am going to prove the theorem which is important which is used again and again both in solid state physics and statistical mechanics which explains how to convert a discrete sum over states like for example, if you have a particle in a box you are forced to restrict yourself to discrete states and then the sum over states uh, naturally becomes converts itself into an integral as you approach the thermodynamic limit. So, I am going to rigorously prove this statement. Okay, so, the other topic I am going to discuss is uh, how to derive the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution which is the distribution of velocities of classical ideal gas as a classical limit for a quantum ideal gas. So, basically, so we, whether it is Fermi gas or Bose gas if you take the classical limit of that, I am going to show you, you can recover the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Then I am going to also show you independently, you can also derive the same Maxwell Boltzmann distribution starting directly from classical considerations like the phase space method and then I am going to derive the classical uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Then I am going to show that the entropy, in order for the entropy is to be extensive, you have to uh, pay attention to what is known as uh, the Gibbs paradox. And I am going to finally, derive the Sakur tetrode formula, which is the formula for the entropy of a classical ideal gas. Next, I am going to show, uh, I am going to explain then the idea of uh, various types of ensemble. So, if you have a, a system which is in contact, in thermal contact with some surroundings. So, I am going to show what it means for the system to approach an equilibrium with the surroundings and uh, what equalizes between the system and the surroundings namely in this case the temperature. So, I am going to be able to define the thermodynamic definition of temperature and then in the case of uh, grand ensemble where not only thermal contact is allowed, but also uh, there is a permeable membrane where uh, particles can flow in and out of the system. So, 
in addition to temperature uh, equalizing between the system and the surroundings, the chemical potential also equalizes and as a result the definition of chemical potential emerges naturally uh, through these considerations. Okay, so, uh, the next, uh, next topic I am going to discuss uh, is uh, the idea of Legendre transformation and uh, its role in finding the Helmholtz and Gibbs free energy. So, the Helmholtz free energy is the analog of entropy for canonical ensembles. So, what is uh, entropy for a micro canonical ensemble? is Helmholtz free energy for a canonical ensemble and Gibbs free energy for a grand canonical ensemble. So, so the, these three are related naturally through what is known as uh, Legendre transformation and there is an elegant geometrical interpretation of the Legendre transformation which I am also going to explain. And then I am going to discuss the important idea that statistical mechanics as it is commonly used uh, in physics uh, is not the whole story especially if you if your system sizes are not large. So, in that case you are you are forced to reckon with uh, uh, statistical fluctuations and I am going to be explaining very briefly of course, how you are going to estimate these fluctuations and under what circumstances they may be ignored. And uh, then I am going to derive the equations of state of ideal Bose and Fermi gases, which requires uh, you know some effort in terms of knowing how to do series expansions and so forth. And then I am going to deviate and uh, call your attention to what is known as a real expansion, just like in the earlier example we were doing expansions in order to obtain the equations of state of Fermi and Bose gases. So, similar expansions are possible in the context of non-ideal classical gases, non-ideal because ideal gases are too simple for classical gas. So, uh, if you have a non-ideal classical gas, then you can do something similar and the expansions in that context is known as a virial expansion. So, then I am going to come back to the idea of a Fermi gas and I am going to show how to derive the Chandrasekhar limit of the mass of a white dwarf. So, it is an application of the idea of uh, degeneracy pressure, which is uh, a concept uh, central to the notion of a uh, ideal Fermi gas and I am going to show how that uh, manifests itself as uh, or it is uh, central to understanding why white dwarfs have a upper mass limit. And uh, the next topic I am going to discuss is the thermodynamics of radiation and in particular I am going to be deriving the uh, this Planck's black body formula through a combination of electromagnetic theory and uh, quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics. Then I am going to discuss the thermodynamics of black holes, which is a very exciting topic because black holes have recently been imaged uh, as you very well know. So, the uh, black hole at the center of the galaxy known as Messier 87 was uh, imaged recently and uh, you know black holes are not fully black because uh, the uh, quantum processes that take place near the event horizon allow mass to leak out of the black hole and eventually black holes evaporate and disappear. So, uh, so this is known as Hawking radiation and I am going to explain to you how to use the concepts of statistical mechanics especially what is known as Bekenstein Hawking entropy and uh, you know the rest of thermodynamics and statmec to uh, calculate how long it takes for a solar mass black hole to completely evaporate. So, then I am going to go back to something more conventional, I am going to discuss a uh, prototype of a non-ideal classical fluid and uh, so, I am going to discuss what is known as the Van der Waals fluid, which is basically a prototype for a first order phase transition, basically a gas to liquid phase transition. So, I am going to show you how what is known as the clausius clyperon equation allows you to map out the coexisting uh, the region of the phase diagram where liquid and gas coexist. Then I am going to discuss uh, magnetism. So, specifically I am going to start off with uh, Landau's diamagnetism which is found in all materials and then Pauli paramagnetism which is found in materials where the constituent particles have an intrinsic magnetic moment. 
And then uh, I am going to finally discuss uh, ferromagnetism in the context of a one dimensional Ising model and uh, I am going to discuss the transfer matrix solution and also the mean field solution which is of course applicable to systems in large number of dimensions because it is an approximate method and it does not work very well in one dimension and I am going to explain how to use mean field methods to study Ising model in uh, three dimensions and so on. And then if time permits I am going to uh, discuss more advanced topics such as uh, renormalization group, second quantization, Matsubara, Green's functions of uh, fermions and bosons and the Schwinger Dyson equation and so on. So, that is if time permits depending upon how the course proceeds. So, I hope you find this uh, selection of topics to your liking and I hope to see you in the rest of the course. Thank you.